G'day guys, here with Jacob Skepnis. And in Purcell. And today we're gonna to talk about the squat for hypertrophy. So it's pretty well known that the squat is a great mass builder, and a lot of people incorporate it into their lower body training in a bid to build bigger legs. Now, we have seen time and time again, a lot of people misuse uh, the squat in their programming, and as a result, their legs aren't as big as what they could be if they were paying attention to some of these basic principles which we're gonna to outline today. So, the first is technique and form. It is pretty obvious, but a lot of people really mess this up. Technique in the squat is not as easy as what we may think. And to effectively recruit the muscles in the squat, we need to make sure that our form is exactly how it should be for our own individual orthopedics and structures. Now, there are obviously a number of variations in the squat which we can use uh, to overload the quads, hamstrings and glutes. However, some variations lend themselves better to building muscle. Now, the front squat, whilst recruiting the quads more because we have a more upright torso, it won't allow you to use as much absolute load as what the high bar back squat would. Similarly, the low bar squat will allow you to use heavier weights. However, as a result, of the mechanics and increasing forward lean, you're not gonna recruit the quads anywhere near as much as you would with a high bar. Therefore, if your goal is maximal hypertrophy, the high bar back squat lends itself extremely well to building bigger legs. Now, in terms of mastering the skill of the squat, there are a number of things that we need to take into consideration. I always like to cue from the ground up. So the first thing we need to look at is the joints in the action that we're performing, which is the squat. Now, at the ankles, we want to ensure that we have three points of contact with the floor. That's two in our forefoot and one in our heel. These points should be in constant contact with the floor and none of them should be coming off the floor at any time or turning in or out. This is where a pair of lifting shoes or simply putting some plates under your heels can be beneficial if you don't have the adequate ankle mobility to get your knees to progress forward. The next issue that we typically see is knee valgus. This is the knees dropping in. Now, this typically occurs from a weakness in the glutes and simply activating your glutes can assist in this, as can having a stable base. The next issue that we commonly see with the squat is a lack of hip mobility. Now, this can be caused by a number of issues that are outside the scope of this video. However, the most common cause of this is not having a neutral spine and this is a result of people having their ribs flared up like this and not being truly neutral, having their ribs packed down and ensuring that their ribs are directly over their pelvis when they squat. Range of motion is an extremely arbitrary term so it's not the be all and end all if you can't squat ass to grass. However, if, to ensure you maximise your leg development you should be squatting to as full a range of motion as possible within your orthopedic profile. The next issue that we commonly see is a lack of upper back tightness. Now this can be caused simply from a misunderstanding of the upper back roll in the squat or through pec tightness and inability to externally rotate at the shoulders. You want to be pulling your shoulders back, down and extending your thoracic throughout the squat to ensure that you are neutral. So, as you can see, the squat is not as simple as it seems. It's a movement that requires some level of mastery before we can progress in terms of intensity and volume. And we spoke about those common mistakes that can affect your ability to recruit the quads. So, before looking at your program design or any other uh, matter like that, it is important that you have mastered the technique and you can perform the squat as best you can. Over to you, Lyndon. Thank you, Jacob. All right, now I'm gonna to touch on the specifics of why you might use a squat within a muscle growth program. So as we've discussed, we're squatting for hypertrophy. What is hypertrophy? Hypertrophy is basically the technical term for muscle growth. And the way we grow muscle is through the process of training. There's always this debate about what's more important, training or nutrition. Basically, training is always the stimulus for muscle growth to occur. Nutrition just allows for that muscle growth to then occur. So we need to stimulate an upregulation of muscle protein synthesis and downregulation of muscle protein breakdown with training and then feed that with protein, amino acids and achieve a positive net protein balance over days and months 
like in years. That's how you get big. Alright, so how do we grow muscle? Like we know that's the aim. What stimulates muscle growth? Basically, muscle grows due to three primary known, primarily known reasons, which is through some great research by Brad Schoenfeld. What Brad's discovered is basically muscle responds to mechanical tension, metabolic stress, and muscle damage. These three factors are what stimulate muscle growth. So those three factors are most easily or sort of the biggest overall contributor to all those factors is volume. So take mechanical, mechanical tension for example. If you look at mechanical tension in isolation, adding weight to the bar will always increase mechanical tension, all other variables being equal. But in order to get the biggest overall effect on all three of the mechanisms, we want to focus on volume. Volume is the amount of work done, basically. So providing technique is solid and range of motion is consistent, it just becomes sets times reps times weight. So, as Jacob's about to touch on, increasing volume is the biggest and most important factor we can look to do when, when aiming to grow our legs or squatting for hypertrophy. However, simply adding weight to the bar and trying to look as strong as you can in the gym and impress the girls who walk past, that's not always the best thing to be aiming for. Thanks, Lyndon. And this is another thing that we see a lot of people really butcher with their programming and the squat in particular is they focus on load and adding weight to the bar. Now we need to understand that intensity, which is load on the bar, directly correlates to strength adaptations. Whereas like Luna mentioned, volume correlates more specifically to hypertrophy. So if you're looking to get big, whilst we can add weight and that's going to have a small contribution to increasing the overall volume within our program, there are other ways we can add volume which are going to lend themselves far better to building a bigger set of legs. And those are by increasing the number of sets that you perform within a given workout or the number of reps. Now, this can be either case depending on where you're at with your squat and where your programming is situated. However, there needs to be some progressive overload to force your body to adapt. So simply adding one rep each week to your you know, top set on the squat and then keeping your you know, sets pretty constant in your back offsets and adding one to two sets over the course of four to six weeks is a great place to start. And when we want to test to see whether or not we are making some improvements, testing our one rep max isn't going to be beneficial for determining whether or not we're building bigger legs because this is going to lend itself far better to neural adaptations like what I mentioned. So testing your 8 rep max, your 10 rep max or an AMRAP which is as many reps as possible to see whether or not you're improving because if your 10 rep max has gone up, chances are that you've got bigger legs because the neural contribution to that is very insignificant and muscle is going to be the primary determinant of whether or not you can actually do more reps. So guys, that is how you should incorporate the squat for hypertrophy. Focus on technique, ensure that you're targeting all three mechanisms within your program and you focus on progressively overloading volume. If you have any questions, feel free to hit us up below and we'll speak to you guys shortly. So guys, that's how you utilize the squat to build muscle in your lower body. It's important to remember that the squat is just a tool in our toolbox that we can use to achieve a stimulus on our quads, hamstrings and glutes that there are many other exercises that we can use if you are somebody who is really struggling to reap the reward and the benefits of the squat. So guys, if you like this video, found it informative, make sure you click like, subscribe to the channel, and we'll speak to you guys next time.